You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Living Without Lies with your host, Donna Warren. You're not alone if you've been the victim of abuse, drug usage, or rape. Living Without Lies is here to help. Listen as Donna Warren assists women across the country break the cycle and help create a new life. So now, please welcome the host of Living Without Lies, Donna Warren. Hi, folks. This is Donna Warren, the host of the Living Without Lies program. Uh, welcome today. Uh, my regular guest, Dee, is here. Dee, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Dee, uh, Denise Clare, and I'm the owner of Successful Living Strategies. Uh, I'm a life success and health coach, and uh, I help people. I inspire them and encourage them and educate and empower uh, people who hate being stuck in life situations or who are striving for their next improvement and really love finding out that we actually have more control over our lives than we've ever believed with uh, 50 years plus uh, continuous study and experience uh, and uh, teaching people uh, how to overcome uh, situations that overwhelm uh, feelings of helplessness uh, and helping them to just take more control of their life and become the people that that they uh, know that they really can be. And Donna and I have both been through much and have overcome a whole lot and uh, are, have uh, decided to try to help everyone uh, to uh, be able to take some of our wisdom and hopefully it'll make a big change in your life. Thank you, Dee. And that's true. We're, the whole idea of the Living Without Lies program is to help people figure out what the problem actually is that they're having and what they can do to fix it. Now, you might think what the problem, you know, is obvious. It's not necessarily true. And one of the things we decided to talk about today was addiction and all addiction. And I mean all, 100% of all addiction is psychological. Some things ultimately, some things we choose to become addicted to, that we choose to use to solve our problems, we can later become addicted to. But that takes time. That's not immediate. I know that in my case, I was addicted to both alcohol and drugs. And I got addicted as a child. I was terrified. I had a physically abusive mother. She was verbally and mentally abusive also, but the physical was what was I was most frightened of. <coughs> because if she didn't, you know, I never could tell. I have to, you know, I've been thought in the last few years I have to thank my mother for something. She was so unpredictable with her moods that um, I had to be able to read body language really well in order to know whether it was safe to be around her. So I can thank my mother for the fact that I'm an excellent, but I can read body language extremely well, and I'm very good at it. And it's proved to be an extremely useful skill over, over my lifetime. But <coughs> addiction is first mental. You have a problem. I was scared. I was afraid. Now, being Italian, being half Italian and growing up in an Italian area, I grew up Italian culturally. And, you know, they gave us uh, wine when we had a cold, put us to bed. Uh, we drank wine and, you know, some other things at family meals and on holidays. And the one thing I found out about the alcohol was that when I drank it, I was less afraid. 
I wasn't as scared as I was when I didn't. So you see, I had found a solution to my fear. And now as a kid, in a household where there was alcohol was prevalent, it wasn't that hard for me to get a hold of it. But it became an issue with other people because, you know, uh, 10, 12-year-old children aren't supposed to run around smelling like booze. You know, even in an Italian family, that gets kind of old. And they don't know quite know what to do about it, it, you know, and that becomes a problem. So, you know, I eventually, as I went on a little bit, I discovered drugs. And then I had an advantage because the people around me, the adults, didn't recognize the symptoms of drug use. So they couldn't tell I was using anything, which meant, of course, I could get in, I could get more, I could take more. I could get myself to the point that I wasn't scared of anything or anybody. And uh, they wouldn't be able to tell. And I was so under the influence for so long, for so many years, that most people had never seen me straight. And I could function that way unless I got too much and started falling down. But basically, I could get by with that, and it fixed my problem, which was being afraid all the time. How about you, Dee? Well, uh it's hard to really say a whole lot because I don't remember a whole lot, but I do know my solution was just blocking it out. And I seem to have been very good at it. Uh, and I, I went through pretty much most of my life not remembering any of it. Uh, and, and so, um, uh, that's pretty much how I, that and, and, um, uh, and uh, turning to the Bible and turning to God, uh, that was pretty much how I got through it. Um, and also, there, uh, uh, my mom had um, had a maid. Uh, actually, during the time that I um, that I I was home with him for about 21 years, uh, there were three maids, and. Um, and they, I think, were a wonderful comfort to me. Uh, I think they probably really helped keep me together uh, a whole lot. Uh, they weren't there every day, uh, once or twice a week, uh, from what I can remember. And uh, I'm very, very thankful, you know, that, that they were there because they kind of, you know, were somewhat of an anchor for me uh, as I was going through those things. And... Um, and um, as I'm going through remembering these things, uh, I um, I pray a lot, and uh, I've learned different techniques. Uh, uh, some of it has to do with um, breathe, different breathing techniques, and, and uh, there's other things uh, uh, that I've learned that I can do to you know to help get me through some of the hard times. Uh, uh, you know when I'm having the flashbacks, uh, and so they aren't as bad, and, um, and they, you know, they they just, uh, I can handle them better, and I know pretty soon I'll be through that, and, um, and I'll be totally out on the other side, but, uh, it just seems like the, um, <clears throat> like as we, as we're unfolding, going, uh, remembering things, uh, it's like kind of uh, peeling away uh, the layers of an onion, and I guess usually the scariest stuff is saved for last. And um, so uh, that's pretty much what I have to do is I, I rely on, on, on prayer and and um, and the different techniques that I've learned to help me get through that. Well, it sounds to me like you got addicted to to religion and prayer. Mm. <laughs> Could be. You could say that. Well, yeah. Yeah. You got addicted to it. It became a solution for your problem. And over time, you couldn't manage without it. And, uh, you know, you keep going back. Anytime things get bad, you know that works. That's what a solution is. It, what, no matter what you choose, the solution is something that has to work and temporarily fix the problem. I was just told we need to go to a commercial, so please let's do that. If you want to talk to us, uh, give us a holler at 866-451-1451. Text me at 732-995-3969. Or go on the uh, 
blog on the website under the Living Without Lies program and leave us a message. And we'll be back in a few. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Before the break, we were talking about addiction. (coughs) (coughs) And we actually choose uh, whatever we become addicted to. But that choice is made by whether or not it fixes the problem. You see, I chose alcohol and drugs. D chose religion. Some folks chose shopping. Others choose you know, sex, others choose porn, others choose other things. There's all kinds of things out there that you can choose. But what you choose has to fix whatever's wrong with you at the moment. All of these things extend from a problem. In my case, it was fear. It sounds to me like, you know, D's, most of D's was fear, too. But uh, for it many... Definitely. It was definitely fear. It was terror. Just terror. Okay, so and others, you'll find people who feel like they're not good enough. You know, that they're just lacking, that they aren't good enough and they don't deserve anything good. That's their problem. And one of those things, you know, shopping might help that. Sex might help it. Alcohol might help it. Drugs might help it. All kinds of things. Religion might help it. Anything that helps it is why we do it. And how does it help it or how does it fix it? It's simple. Whatever it is you've chosen, it increases the serotonin level in your brain and makes you feel good, makes you feel okay, like things are all right. You know, anybody who's ever gambled, whether you're, you don't have to be an addict to, you know, you win something and you, you're on top of the world, the serotonin levels are screaming and you're totally happy. You'll come down, but it doesn't have to be a bad coming down. But for somebody like me who was terrified, who was scared and afraid, coming down was not too much fun. However, it, t- it takes years in most cases. With most things, it takes years to become physically addicted. And not everything that people come and become addicted to is physically addictive, only to the extent that it increases their serotonin levels. Alcohol and drugs do eventually become physically addictive. There is a medical case for sex becoming physically addictive. But most other things is creating, it's increasing the serotonin level. It's helping them to forget whatever the problem is. You know, it's the standard issue that we've all heard. You have a 16, 17-year-old teenage boy goes to a party. He's shy. He doesn't know what to say. You know, he takes a couple of drinks of alcohol, and all of a sudden he can talk to the girls and he can do things. That helped him overcome his shyness. 
Now, shyness isn't something you're going to become an alcoholic over normally. It'll take a lot more than that in most cases. But eventually, if we want to stop using, you see, like in my case, both the drugs and the alcohol, they became a problem. You know, and guys, and people who don't know this, there's no such thing as a drug addict that will not drink if drugs aren't available. Same thing is true for alcoholics. If alcohol is not available, we'll take drugs. We'll take whatever happens to be available. Each of us has our own drug of choice, the one we'd prefer to have. But we'll take what's available if we can't get what we prefer. So out there, we're going here, and, you know, I, once I become physically addicted then I might have to have it for that reason, too. But you know what? Anytime I was ever locked up or put in a place where I couldn't get anything after 30 days or so, I no longer physically needed it. And sometimes I'd stay, you know, straight and sober and clean for a while until something happened and the fear came back and I got scared again and I was terrified again. And guess what? I knew without any doubt that the alcohol or drugs would fix my problem. I didn't need it physically at that point. It was the need to overcome my fear. Did you have any experiences like that, T, where you were doing fine and dandy and then you got scared and all of a sudden you find yourself praying constantly because you're terrified? Well, yeah. Is yeah, still- um, but but the thing is that you know uh, answers actually come to me. I mean, I'm uh, I've been led to a lot of different uh, 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 information to help me to learn, you know, what what the root causes, you know, of of this is, and and uh, to you know to shine a light on the things that actually happened, and and uh, to um, to be able to see them in a different light, and uh, one of the most wonderful things that's that is coming from all of this is the fact that you know I realize that uh, if if those things hadn't happened to me, and I hadn't been so determined, you know, to to find the answers and to overcome these things. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today. I probably wouldn't be the person I am today. I wouldn't be so sensitive to other people's uh, feelings and have a strong desire to do everything I can to uh, to wipe out, um, you know, situations like that. Uh, the more we learn about ourselves and, and we can uh, reframe things, I mean, I, I mean, the wealth of knowledge that I have uh, uh, on how my, how the mind works and how things work uh, is is really amazing, and uh, I know that I'm going to be able to use all of this in ways that not only will help myself but will be able to help a whole lot of other people. So it's not just um, it's not just overcoming the fear. Uh, you know, facing part of it is just facing it. It's just, just to see what really did happen uh, and shine a light on it. And, um, you know, the more you're able to do that, then, of course, the fear dissipates. But to have a different perspective because there's more than than one way to look at something. And so it's just really um, uh, a constant uh, discovery journal journey for me uh, to see things differently, to put things in, in a better perspective. Uh, and then be able to be in a position where I can use that to, you know, to help a whole lot of other people. Okay. And what what he's saying is true. In order to overcome any of these things, you have to look at what's causing the problem. You have to look at what the actual problem is. And it can be anything. It can be almost anything or it can be more than one thing. You know, uh, my fear and terror was one thing. But, you know, if I felt inadequate and not good enough as well, that was just an additional problem. You know, it didn't make the other one go away, and it sure didn't help anything. I was just told we need to go to commercial again, so let's go ahead and do that, and we'll talk more about this when we come back. Want to talk to us, holler. Give us a holler at 866-451-1451. Uh, you can text me at 732 995 
or you can leave a message on the radio station website under our program on the blog. Um, we'll be back in a few. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at jobsannex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. jobsannex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we I just started talking about uh, how to fix the problems. Like I say, addiction is a solution to a problem, and you're not going to get rid of whatever that addiction might be until you fix the actual problem. <coughs> you know, it's kind of like uh, putting the Band-Aid on, on the cut without ever doing anything to fix the cut. And the cut's infected, and you don't do anything to fix the infection. You just cover it up. It ain't going to help much. And that's what happens in addiction. We, you know, people stop. We stop using whatever it is we're doing, especially in the case of drugs and alcohol, because they do ultimately become physically addictive and do a lot of physical harm. The only other thing that I know can do as much harm to an individual is both gambling and shopping addiction, because it destroys their finances and can destroy their family and make them lose everything that they have. Most of the other addictions are they cause problems, but not in the same way. So, you know, if we're, if you want to stop addiction, and you got to find out what the cause of the problem is. Now, in my case, it was fear. B, D told you hers was fear. So what do you do about the fear? Well, I found one thing I needed to do for the fear was to try to stay away from sources that caused my fear. You know, and as I grew up, I had a physically abusive mother, and uh, my first husband was physically abusive. You know, and that was first I had to get away from that type of people. And you know, when you're when you're an addict and uh, stoned half the time, most decent people don't want anything to do with you. So I was also been convinced that I was worthless, useless, and you know, this. The thing I was called frequently enough was a drunken whore or an addict, nothing but an addict, and all these other nasty little things that people called me. And unfortunately, when we get called something enough and told we are something enough, most of the time we end up believing it. So the very first thing I had to do to straighten out my life was to figure out what I actually believed, to figure out what I actually believed. You know, did I believe that I was totally worthless and useless and didn't deserve anything? And if so, why did I believe that? Where did that come from? How did that happen that I believed that? What caused me to believe that? You know, I'd done bad things, but not, you know, I was being called out long before I did some of the really bad things. So, you know, that's that cause and effect thing. And why did I believe it? 
And how was, you know, like I say, stopping physically was not a problem. I could check myself into a rehab place and quit, quit using. But when I got back out, you know, I might stay straight and clean for a while, but it wouldn't be that long before something would happen that would bring up all the fear, all the terror, all the other stuff. And the only solution I knew that actually worked was to use again. And that would solve my problem temporarily, but it didn't help the overall situation. Did you run into any of that type of thing, uh, Dee? Well, uh, like I said, no, not personally, but I mean, I've known, I mean, I watched my husband, you know, and, and, um, and he had, um, he had um, gone uh, into rehab a number of times. I think he just really had a hard time coping uh, with life uh, in general. I don't know all of the problems that he had, but um, but I know he. I, there were times when he would really uh, work hard at um, you know turning things around. But it's, it would seem like just when things were going pretty good uh, that. Um, that you know, it, it, if something would trigger him, and he he would uh, you know go back to uh, the alcohol and stuff like that. And so, and I, and I do know from uh, from study other studies and and working with other people, and and um, you know even looking back at at my own life, it seems like lots of times when when we get really close to someone. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a love relationship. It could be, uh, it could be a, just a friendship. But you know, if, if you're getting closer, and one or other or both believe that there's something inherently wrong with them, and that if they get too close, they're going to find out, and then they're going to leave because they'll know how how terrible uh, we believe ourselves to be, uh, then. Something will happen. The subconscious makes sure that something happens to, you know, to cause a distance or to even totally break things up. But it it, it just happens over and over and over again. It's just what happens. And, uh-huh. Until you know, unless, unless you actually you know say, well, okay, well, <laughs> why don't we find out what's causing all this and let's fix it. Well, it sounds to me like you were just talking about self-sabotage. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> definitely. There's a whole bunch of that going on. And yeah, I, I really wasn't. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I really wasn't that aware of it until, you know, I started seeing this in my husband. And, and as, you know, time has gone on and, and I've, you know, talked um, with other people and and different groups of people and uh, and then looking back on my own life, you know, and and seeing, you know, how different things happened and it does seem to be that when things were going well, uh, you know, something would happen and it would totally <laughs> undo, <laughs> you know, for quite a while. Sometimes you have you know to really work to try to get things back to where. Uh, you know where you wanted them to be, uh, and and lots of times this is you know the reasons are very very uh, deep seated and um, not always that easy to uh, you know to find, and uh, so it takes a lot of inner work um, to to realize these things. And um, and I've had some excellent coaches. I mean, anybody who's a coach usually they have coaches coaching them. And uh, to help them so that they can get to the next level. And there's, and we're complicated. Our minds are very complicated. And uh, our bodies. So, you know, the more that we can learn, uh, and the better it is. It helps us to grow and become, you know, who we really, really are, not who we believe we are. Okay. Uh, I was just told we need to go to another commercial. And uh, we'll, I'll comment on what Dee said when we come back. Give us a holler at 866-451-1451. Text me at 732-995-3969 or leave us a message on the radio station blog under the Living Without Lies program and we'll be back in a few. 
Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth-generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoub.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Hi, folks. Welcome back. Uh, before the break, Dee was talking about how things would seem to be going good and then something would happen. Well, here's how I saw, see that. Something, things would be going good and going great and everything was working out right. And it's like my unconscious self, that part of my unconscious mind, the part of me that I don't have a direct logical connection to, but that's there, would all of a sudden say, oh, my God, things are going good. We can't have this. I don't deserve anything good. This can't happen. Now, what can I do to mess it up? And that's what it kind of was like. You know, uh, that at, on an unconscious level, I would mess it up. I'd do something that would cause a problem. I didn't realize till afterward that I'm the one that did it, but I did, you know. In fact, part of the getting better process and fixing process was getting to the point and I recognized when I did that after the fact. Ultimately, I got so I realized I was doing it while it was happening. And eventually, I could see what I was fixing to do before I did it and not do it. Did you have that type of an experience, Ding? Uh, Well, I think it's just something uh, that I'm becoming more and more aware of. Uh, it seemed like there was, you know, there's been long periods of time when things have gone fairly well. Uh, it seems like the more I try to uh, take something to the next level, you know, and it just seems like, uh, you know, things start falling apart. And um, it, it's part of the way the mind works. And um, uh, it's, it's kind of a... Um, protection mode we're programmed from a very early age that all of us that we really don't measure up and so um uh the brain tries to protect us from what it believes will be another 
another failure, uh, uh, another disappointment. Uh, and, and so uh, it's really trying to protect us from, from, you know, all those bad feelings, you know, believing that we don't, you know, that we're not good enough to make, actually make it happen. So learning how to overcome those limiting beliefs is part of the process and um, and unfortunately it hasn't been easy uh, for all the people that I talk to I'm on calls every day and, uh, and there's usually quite a few people on the call and so uh, you know listening to different people and it seems like we're all pretty much go through the same type of thing in one way or another and um, and so uh, really getting to the point when we realize we're not as bad as we've believed ourselves to be, uh, just actually getting to the point where we actually can accept that at a deep level. Um, but unfortunately, it's not uh, the easiest thing in the world to do. <coughs> no, it's not, especially in a culture that demands perfection. You know, so many people out there punish their children for not being perfect. And the simple fact is a matter of there's no such thing as a perfect human being. We all have abilities. We all have skills. We all have limitations. You know, there are some things that, you know, for each one of us, we have at least one thing we totally suck at. You know, we're not perfect. And we live in a society that demands perfection from us. And God forbid if your parents demand it on top of what our society demands, it leaves many children growing up thinking, like like you said, Dee, they're not good enough. They're not sufficient. They're not okay. They didn't do something well. Therefore, they're a failure. They're no good. They're useless. They're worthless, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you have a bunch of people out there, and like I say, that, that little thing, that little voice that's – I was – you know, I like to think of that as my internal child, that we all have a five-year-old that lives within us, and my five-year-old's throwing a fit because it doesn't feel like it's good enough for something, and it's afraid it's going to fail, and it doesn't want to fail, so it's going to fix it so it never happens. What do you think, Dave? Well, that's very true, and I, I experience the same thing. Um, but what I'm trying to I'm trying to reprogram is, you know, if you don't try, uh, it, it's an automatic failure. And you know, and if you continue to to uh, to learn and and figure things out, eventually, you know, you, you'll get where you need to be. And um, uh, trying to uh, undo judgment uh, because that is it, it is such a problem it really is and, and we do it we, we do it to ourselves we do it to others and really labels are for food uh, not people and uh, so you know really working on learning to uh, undo a, a lot of what's been done uh, is um, is quite a journey. It's quite a challenge, um, but it is something that we can actually overcome if we don't give up. Okay, yeah. One of the that's the whole idea of finding out what we truly believe. If uh, you know, I believe I'm not good enough. Well, I need to look at why do I think that? What makes me think I'm not good enough? Where did that come from? And was it true at any point? It might have been. You know, at some point it might have been. I might have been trying to do something in which I have absolutely no talent or ability, you know, and totally suck at. And, yes, I would have done a horrible job in that case. But that was only one thing. That doesn't mean because I'm not good at one thing doesn't mean I can't do other things. Everybody out there has a talent. We all have talents and abilities, and we all have limitations, and part of fixing ourselves is figuring out what those things are. And one of the reasons figuring them out is to figure out what we believe about ourselves. And some things are things we've told ourselves about ourselves. Others are things we've been told by other people. It just depends, and we chose to believe them. Now, for children, children tend to believe what their families and their parents tell them, at least up until the age of 10 or 12 they do. 
and uh, they tend to believe it and they take it to heart. After the age of 10 or 12, they start questioning everything, but that doesn't mean they still don't deep down believe the bad things they've been told about themselves. They don't, and that doesn't mean they don't believe them. You see, when I was little, I was interested in math, science, and that type of thing. And uh, my father did not discourage me from doing that. In fact, if anything, he encouraged me. And But I could have grown, he could have told me that girls don't do that. And, you know, and I could have grown up believing that the fact that I was interested in, in stuff like that made me a freak. But I didn't because he didn't, he didn't do that to me. But he could have. I was told we need to go to a commercial. So uh, if you want to talk to us, holler, give us a holler at 866-451-1451. Text me at 732 3969 or leave a message on the radio station website on the blog under the Living Without Lies program, and we'll be back in a few. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom on the BBM Global Network as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at L'École des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Before the break, we were talking about getting to know ourselves, getting to find out what we're good at, what we believe. When we do all that and clear all this mess away and figure out, we need to look at the beliefs that we currently have and see if they serve any purpose in our life today. You know, a belief that I might have made very good sense when I was 10 years old today as an adult has served no purpose. Uh, You know, A good example of that is talking to strangers. For children, that can be very dangerous. Um, It could be dangerous for an adult, but it's not likely to. So we have beliefs there that have no, do nothing good in our lives today. And we need to, you know, find out what those beliefs are. 
And and when we do find out what we believe, whether or not they hold any value or have any place in our life today, the way things are today, if, you know, if that makes any sense to anybody. You know, like I said, I was, uh, most people told me that there was something wrong with me because I liked math and science growing up. Girls don't have to go through that today because that's not the popular opinion today. But it was when I was a child. And it, you know, and as I had to look at that when I finally decided that I wanted to become an engineer and decided to, you know, look into going to school and making that dream come true. And at that time, folks, I already had children. And, uh, you know, and I looked into that, I found out that that belief didn't make any sense nowadays. It, it mattered a little bit when I went to school, but not as much. And today it really doesn't make any difference at all. What do you think, Dee? Well, I agree with that, too. I, I know one of the things that I grew up with, and I know you, you were aware of it. I don't remember whether you're left-handed or not, but um, I was. Uh, I'm not anymore. Well, I, by birth, and I, I am ambidextrous now, and I use my left hand a lot more uh, than uh, I used to. But uh, back then, uh, there was a belief that, you know, it, it was really a terrible thing to be left-handed and that you would have a terrible life, you know, if you, if you, if you were. And... Um, so horrible things were done to me to make sure that I was able to switch hands and um, found out, you know, that, that there was really no truth to that. I uh, found out there's been, there's lots and lots of very talented uh, artists, musicians, uh, statesmen, who people who've done all kinds of really good things uh, throughout history that were left-handed. And um, actually, that was very good for me to, to to consciously be aware of that, because even though it didn't really make any sense to me as an adult, uh, those programs were still running uh, in the back of, of you know of my mind and in my subconscious, and um, you know had you know some kind of a, uh, a hold on. Uh, on, on how I how I saw myself, and so you know, lots of things uh, that that you're told. I, I was told that um, if I didn't know how to play the piano, um, I would never be popular. Uh, and, and at the time, I was told that um, I, don't, I didn't know anybody who played the piano. I mean, maybe back in my mom's day, that was, you know, what people did. They gathered around the piano and they sang songs and stuff. But but um, guitars were becoming, you know, the instrument that was very popular. So uh, I'm not really sure that I chose to believe her, you know, on that. But it could have <laughs> you know, caused me to, you know, feel like I was going to have to be unpopular the rest of my life because I didn't. Well, I, I, I learned how to play the piano. I just didn't like it. Uh, I didn't like the teacher. She wasn't very nice. And and uh, I finally quit because it just wasn't worth it to me. Uh, but anyhow. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you can, you can believe, okay, let's say that I, and I don't really remember how popular I was, but uh, if I wasn't, I could have sat there and said, Okay, that you know, if I believed that, and you know, it could have actually been because I believed that that I was unpo- that I would be unpopular, and it would have absolutely nothing to do with reality at all. And, and so that's the kind of stuff that happens to us, where you know, people say things like that, and then if for some reason what they're telling you manifests, even though it has absolutely nothing to do with reality. Uh, it becomes your reality because you believe it. That's true. If you believe it, it is, it is truth to you, whether it's true or not. And uh, this is one of the problems we have. We need to look at our beliefs. And it's very difficult to do because in order to look at our beliefs, we need to be brutally honest with ourselves. You know, so many people are so used to blaming everyone else for whatever goes wrong in their lives nothing's ever their fault 
It's like the little kid saying, the devil made me do it. <laughs> you know, and it, they're looking for excuses not to accept responsibility for themselves. And the fact is, folks, we are responsible for everything we think, feel, see, and do. We're responsible for what we do. Now, I don't know about y'all. I can't always help what I think. And I can't always help what I feel. But I sure as hell have 100% control over what I do. And each and every one of us does. I don't physically have to do anything if I don't want to. It's that simple. My hand will not move itself unless I tell it to move. You know, I might look at someone and look at them and instantly dislike them. I might not be able to help that feeling, but I don't have to do anything about it. You know, my beliefs are, are what I have, and I need to find out what I believe because my beliefs actually control my actions on a subconscious level. On a subconscious level, that little five-year-old I said was yelling and screaming because it didn't want anything new to happen because it was scared. Well, that's our that's, that's subconscious beliefs coming to the forefront in your life. You got to be aware of what they are if you're going to do anything to prevent them from causing problems. I was just told we got to go to uh, a commercial, and let's go do that. Uh, you want to talk to us? Uh, holler, give us a holler at eight six six four five one one four five one. Uh, text me at seven three two nine nine five three nine six nine. Or leave us a message on the blog on the radio station website under the Living Without Loss program, and we will be back in a few. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy to understand format through her company smith title services renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com isn't it time to sell your property today learn the my short sale guru way if you seek a courageous advocate prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations carol ann hamilton is the one for you carol ann is an elder care coach author and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents as a result of a challenging journey. Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and Tune In Radio. Welcome back, folks. Uh, before the break, we were talking about how different things appear to us. And the biggest thing to get out of tonight's show is the fact that in order to fix whatever's wrong, you need to know what you believe. Your beliefs control everything that happens in your life and everything that we do. And in order to solve any problems, you got to understand what they are. And your anything good or bad comes from what you believe. Dee, do you have anything you'd like to say to folks before we sign off for tonight? Well, uh, I really... Uh, I'm hoping that that when we're here that we are able to maybe say something, uh, maybe in just a certain way. Uh, I know when I'm learning, uh, lots of times I need to hear something similar said, maybe just a little bit different, and, and it starts clicking, and then I'm able to start using that in my life. So I'm hoping that we can do that for you 
and uh, and Donna, you're going to talk about the uh, the foundation and trying to help people get uh, off the streets. Yeah, I will. Is that all you wanted to say to them? Uh, Dee wants me yeah. to talk. Dee wants me to tell you about our foundation. The foundation's name is uh, the Living Without Lies Foundation. Our primary goal is to open a, you know, a, a shelter for single women in the city of Philadelphia. There's six million people in the city, approximately, and there's exactly one shelter for single women who are homeless, and it can it has it has a capacity of 120. We need more beds. We need more spaces. We need more places for these folks to come. And so please look our up the website is Living Without Lies Foundation dot com or dot org, either one, because I have both I own both names. And you can check us out. Donate if you feel you know, volunteer if you'd like to help us out. And uh, we're hoping to get people off the street. It's cold out there, folks. It's not as cold as it has been some winters, but it's cold to sleep outside. And I don't know about y'all, but the one thing I'm, I've am i dedicated my life to doing is making sure I've got a roof over my bed. I do not like to sleep outdoors, especially when the weather's cold. And, you know, I hope, folks, that you got something out of our program today. I uh, hope you will. You have a nice weekend, and the rest of the week, and a nice weekend. Come back and see us again next Monday. You know, and uh, I sincerely hope that things go well for you, and you ha enjoy yourself. And I just want to say good night. God bless y'all. You've been listening to Living Without Lies with your host Donna Warren. Contact Donna at D-L-U-H-R-S at Comcast.net or call 732-995-3969 for information about the Living Without Lies Foundation. You are not alone on the path to building a new life. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.